Hello, um, today I'm going to do uh, two tutorials, um, one after the other, but they'll be separate videos. Uh, one will be vertical launch, which will be this one, and the other one will be torpedoes. Um, finally getting around to it. So this is the vertical launch to uh, tutorial for missiles. Um, so the first thing we're going to need for vertical launch is obviously a boat, and to put on the boat we're going to need uh, some missile stuff. So to connect missiles up, it's pretty simple. Start with connectors. Don't bother with the controller until until you've got everything in place, because then you can add the controller somewhere. As long as it's connected to one of the connectors, it doesn't matter where. So I'm going to get uh, a bank of six or seven, because it's sent. It's going to be from the center. Uh, seven uh, vertical launch torpedoes. Uh, not torpedoes. Vertical launch um, missiles. Three, five, seven. So there's seven. Okay. Next to these, or on top of these, you're going to need to include some launch pads. So I'm going to put this next to it, because then it takes up less space on the floor, and it means that you can actually cover these up uh, quite comfortably if you wanted to. Uh, or even include that cover as part of the gantry system, which is the next part. So we need some gantries, so I'm going to put them around here, like this. Um, the direction they're facing does kind of affect their launch, but not a lot. Okay, I'm going to make them go um, six high because I can. Uh, there we go. So there's all the torpedo uh, tubes in place. So at this stage we have no controller connected, so I'm going to add a controller here at the back. Uh, is that the actual... That's got, yeah, it is a controller. There it is. Eventually we connected it. Right, so now it's connected. You can see it's connected there. So it's connected here. They've all got a basic uh, shell because they're beyond five. So you get uh, an automated um, shell created for you if you build it between three and five in length. Because these are six, um, I've deliberately done this so that you can um, cr uh, see how cr custom uh, uh, custom missiles are created. Okay, so from here we can now look into other things. Uh, so these will not replenish because we don't actually have any ammo storage on the boat. As with most of my boats, I generally always don't bother with the ammo that I'm going to be demoing with. Uh, so I'm going to add the ammo so we can do some testing. I'm going to install uh, a few barrels on each side. There we go, so plenty of ammo now, we've got 3,200 ammo. So these will replenish after they've been fired. Okay, so let's have a look at the other features that we actually have for missiles before we go anywhere. So we've currently used all four along the top here. We haven't used the ejector add-on, add the lure transceiver, or the reverse launch pad. Um, reverse launch pads are useful if you're planning on firing something out the back of a vehicle or um, providing it uh, a different launching position. So you, you could have rear facing missiles, say, uh, but they would be launched backwards to start with. Um, it's just an alternative method. What else have we got? We've got the laser emitter. The laser emitter is useful. Um, that provides a direct laser connection between the laser point and its target. If it cannot see its target, the laser will not log on and the missiles will not follow the laser. However, the missile will only follow the laser if you've got the feature built into the missile. Identify friend or foe. Okay, so this means that, as it says, uh, it stops heat seeking and sonar missiles targeting friendly units. So basically, it's an anti-heat seeker, so if it's on your team, it won't fire at you. That's all that's for. It's very useful to add, and I will be adding one to this list, uh, this uh, this set out. Okay, so I've added one there. I've actually got two. One gets exploded, the other one you take over. It doesn't matter if you've got one or two or five or however many. Staggered fire add-ons. Now, this one I'd recommend only having one of, because for each one you're giving yourself additional staggers. Um, so. What a stagger fire add-on does is, instead of firing them all at exactly the same time, it gives it 
a gap between each one. So if I bring one in here, you can see I've just added a delay, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, back down to zero. So a 0.1 delay means 0.1 of a second between each one firing. A winch. Okay, so this is used with a particular part of the missile. Um, it does actually work, I have tried it, um, where you fire your missile at your target. Um, I highly recommend a magnet. Um, it hits the target and then whichever vehicle is heavier moves a lot less, the other one is pulled towards it. So if it's the lighter vehicle it will be pulled towards the heavier vehicle. Um, it can pull vehicles over, so you hit the top of the main mast for example, you can pull a vehicle over with it. There is a certain amount of um, tension though, so after a certain amount of tension it will break. Um, but you kind of get used to it after a while. So I'm not going to go into anything further now. Um, I've finished building this entire system except for the actual missiles themselves. So they're all nice and grey. I do have some presets but I'm not going to use them, I'm going to build these from scratch. So for short range-ish um, missiles, uh, so the best thing I've found so far is the variable thruster rather than the short range thruster. So the short range thruster basically goes, right, fire as fast as I can. Useful if you've got forward aiming or side aiming missiles, but not for vertical. It'll just keep going up and won't turn in time and will eventually stop most of the time. I'm not saying that's perfectly the same every time. Anyway, yeah, so variable thrust is what I'm going to be using. Double click, it's in. So I'm going to modify the variable thruster. I'm going to change his ramp up time to 10. So this means it takes 10 times longer to get to its maximum speed, which is a thousand thrust per second. I'm going to reduce this down to 800. There. The reason I'm doing this is it actually saves a little bit of fuel, and it can go further. The warhead arming delay, two seconds is fine. That's just the amount of time it takes before it actually blows up if it hits a target. Useful if you're bouncing off of your own vehicles and you don't want them to explode. Um, guidance activation, leave it, leave it at its lowest. If you put it high, it could take quite a while before it actually decides to hit the target. However, of course, you might want that higher if you're firing a long, long range missile and you don't want it to actually start turning towards the target and therefore possibly going in the water too early. Next. Okay, so we're going to need some fuel. Uh, a couple of fuel tanks and a couple of fins should be enough. Right, and we're, we're going to do the last three now. So there are th there are two different setouts for this. One is the type I'm going to um, be doing. I'm going to use a target prediction guidance. So this aims it at the expected intercept point. Now the expected intercept point is on an infrared seeker, the central point of the vehicle or wherever the hottest point is. So if you want that, everything will hit in the same place, basically the central point of the vehicle. APN guidance. So this will turn it to go to a direct point and try and keep it on that. It's only effective when closing on the target. Okay, so it doesn't actually work very well at long angles. So uh, if you're planning on distances, use the target prediction. If you're planning short angles, APM. Short angles, still, you're going to get some dodgy hits because of the way it works. I'm going to use target prediction with a camera and infrared seeker at the front. So we're left with four body parts. These body parts we can do whatever we want with. We stick a regulator on them, makes them last longer in the water. If they drop, so they become stronger mines. We stick ballast on them. That's pointless because it's really for underwater. Uh, EMP, explosive and fragmentation warheads. This is the stuff that does the damage. Now, I strongly recommend fragmentation over explosive if you're firing lots of missiles very, very close to each other because one explosive one can take out the others in the chain and therefore not necessarily hit the target with all of them. However, I will be putting one explosive warhead on just because it gives it that little bit of explosive field. Okay, now I've designed the whole missile, I can have a look at other things. So we've got a sticky flare. So when this sticks to the vehicles, rather than exploding, it makes them more prominent targets. So basically that will make them... Well, it's basically an ad additional heat source, so it makes things easier to shoot at. 
um, magnets mentioned earlier this is actually quite useful for anything that you want to attract towards a metal vehicle if it's made of wood it's pointless one turn okay so you might want your weaponry to turn at the last second towards its target or something like that useful for that once it's done its turn it won't turn again so if the target has moved away from that point they won't change their direction to follow it Safety fuse means if you, it hits your own targets, it will not blow up. Proximity fuse means when something gets close to it, it'll explode. Harpoon cable drum, as I mentioned earlier, sort of do with uh, harpoon thingies, you know, the cable, the winch, that thing. And I'll go into the torpedo on on uh, the other video, uh, along with the sonar, the designator. Okay, the designator and the laser beam riders. These are to do with that laser beam thingy bob that it sticks off them. Don't worry about them. You can use a single pixel IR seeker if you want instead of the infrared seeker, but I, I prefer the full size thing. The buoys, they're quite useful. Basically, that will ping targets for your AI. So you, it will say, ah, I found this stuff near me. So your AI can go, huh, I can see the target better now. A similar. So the last thing, the active radar seeker in here. Only good if you've got an AI against you that's using active radar. Thumb pad. Okay, when it collides with a construct, it'll impart kinetic damage relative to the missile's mass and forward speed. So, what this is saying is when it hits the target, it will provide additional kinetic damage as well as any other payloads on board. It increases the missile's health, which means you can't be taken out quite so easily. You can use missiles to take out missiles too. Um, I've never set one up, I'm not going to show you in this video, uh, will be for another day. So I've clicked assign to all, all missile lengths. Look, they're all set. So now I can test this. Okay, so there's my target over there. So let me drop to the deck, go up to this, so I'm controlling it directly, and I'm going to aim at the target. Now there's no guarantees that this is going to work first time never ever guarantee it works first time. So you can see they've all gone point 0.1 of a second different. So as you can see the direction that the boat is facing is kind of the direction they sort of launched in. So they didn't really look over to the right even though that's where the target was. Partly because it would almost practically in line with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the chair up here or one of the chairs and I'm going to turn the vehicle this is a very very slow vehicle for turning but we are moving I mean after all it is a very large vehicle so I'm going to add a little bit of reverse thrust in So this boat doesn't have a very good uh, centre of mass on it. It is literally a massive boat. So now we've got a much better targeting angle. Let's try that again, shall we? So they're all taking off in a similar direction to before. Which is very interesting, because it's the complete wrong way. Um, that boat is definitely on a different team, so you can always tell because you won't get the targeting thing on it otherwise. So the targeting thing only comes up if something is on a different team to you. So let's try one more time. Hopefully this time, it's directly in front. There we go, they're hitting the target. Right, so as you can see the target navigation thing has gone for the centre point of the vehicle which I can actually demonstrate if I go to... Uh, which one is it? 7, detect view. So if I change to uh, the heat view, so the hot point is here, or it would be here, but 
looking at the temperatures of the vehicle I don't know if you can see it because there's so many of them there will be one there which is around a hundred-ish for no reason at all and that's what they're targeting uh, if we go to radar, so that points on the radar, sonar, radar points, equipment, so there's no AI on board None. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to bring up is the path view, so I'm going to fire and you're going to see the paths So there's the paths of them currently, and you can see they're all literally converging on the same place in the vehicle, which is down there. And if I go in there now, you can see this is literally the centre of the vehicle. Okay, so the last test I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the target prediction guidance for demonstration purposes, swap it for the APN guidance, and just see what happens. So, I've still got the path view on. Firing again. Here they come. So as you can see, the APN doesn't really do anything. Um, that's why I use the target prediction guidance. So if I now turn that off completely and put in another explosive, wait for the missiles to reappear, there they are, fire at this again, now let's see if the paths come on, so they don't really care where they're going now do they? they're going straight up, they're, they're off out of, the, out of the atmosphere, so you can see why the target prediction guidance seems to be the best one to choose, so if I go back to the target prediction guidance Sign it on all, wait for them to reappear, there they are, target prediction guidance on them. And fire one more time. This should provide a path. There we go, there's the path. They found the path, they're going straight here. So this is the reason why I would choose target prediction guidance for vertical launch missiles. It does work, they do hit the target. They don't necessarily hit the target where you want them to, but they do hit it. Okay, uh, that was Vertical Launch Missiles. Um, thank you for watching, and if you're interested, I will also be doing a uh, t -t torpedo tutorial as well. Thanks.